Follow LangFocus on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hello everyone, LangFocus channel ようこそ。今日は I want to talk about something called code switching. 言語を切り替えること。Some people are monolingual and speak just one language. Other people are bilingual or multilingual and speak more than one language. Bilingual or multilingual people sometimes switch back and forth between two or more different languages. This is called code switching. One situation in which code switching is common is within immigrant families. For example, let's imagine a Russian family moves from Russia to the United States and the children grow up speaking Russian as their native language, but they learn English outside of the home. When the children in that family speak to their siblings, they might code switch between Russian and English. Another situation in which code switching is common is in certain countries where a native language is spoken alongside a former colonial language. One example that comes to mind is in India, where Hindi English code switching is common. And another example is in Philippines, where Tagalog English code switching is common. You may have seen my earlier video on diglossia, which means switching between two different languages or two different forms of a language in different situations. For example, formal versus informal situations. Code switching is different in that people switch languages in a single situation, within a single conversation, and sometimes within a single sentence. Code switching is largely unpredictable, and speakers often impulsively switch languages without any conscious choice. In code switching, one language is the dominant language, normally the native language of the group. This is sometimes called the matrix language, and the additional language is called the embedded language. The matrix language lays out the basis for the communication, and then utterances from the additional language are embedded into the matrix language. There are various reasons that people might switch from their matrix language to an embedded language. Number one, directive function. People switch languages to either include or exclude other people from the conversation. Maybe you want to tell secrets, so you switch to a language that the people around you don't understand. Or maybe the opposite. Maybe you want to end a private conversation and re engage with the people around you, so you switch to a language that they do understand. Number two, expressive function. People include the embedded language in order to express some part of their identity. For example, they want to show their connection to a certain country or culture. And in some cases, it might be an expression of status through association with a prestigious out group. Number three, referential function. Someone who is unable to express an idea easily in one language switches to the other language in order to express it more easily. This seems to be very common among bilingual children and immigrant families. Number four, phatic function. Sometimes a speaker switches languages or repeats something in both languages in order to emphasize it. Number five, metalinguistic function. This is reporting something in the other language or commenting on something said in the other language. For example, you're speaking in Japanese, but then you quote a lyric from an English language song without translating it. Maybe you say something in the embedded language, but then you explain it or add further commentary in the matrix language. Number six, poetic function. The speaker says certain words or makes jokes in the embedded language for amusement or for some kind of artistic purpose. Code switching takes a few different forms. Here are some of the main ones. Number one, intersentential switching. In which the language switches for entire sentences or clauses. For example, a bilingual Spanish English speaker says, Sometimes I'll start a sentence in English y termino en español. Number two, intrasentential switching, in which the speaker switches languages within a clause or sentence boundary. Here's an example from a bilingual English Portuguese speaker's speech I don't know o meu lugar nesse mundo. This means I don't know my place in this world. Number three, extrasentential or tag switching. A tag from one language is inserted into an utterance in another language. For example, a bilingual English Japanese speaker might say, It's a good movie, de show, meaning, It's a good movie, right? Let's look at a couple of cases of code switching. The first one is from the Indian movie The Three Idiots. The matrix language is Hindi and the embedded language is English. The background to this scene is that the director of a university is welcoming the incoming freshman students. Don't forget! कि हर साल आईसी में चार लाख एप्लीकेशन आते हैं और उनमें से सिर्फ दो सौ सेलेक्ट होते हैं यू नाउ लेट्स टेक अ लुक एट द सेंटेंस वी जस्ट हर्ड द सेंटेंस मींस डोंट फॉरगेट आईसीई रिसीव्स 400,000 एप्लीकेशन अ ईयर एंड ऑफ दोस ओनली 200 आर सेलेक्टेड यू द फर्स्ट क्लॉज ऑफ दिस सेंटेंस डोंट फॉरगेट इज इन इंग्लिश This is intersentential code switching because the switching occurs at the clause boundary. This is probably done to draw attention to the phrase, which is the phatic function. Applications is also in English, switching within the clause or sentence boundaries. 
I suspect that this word's in English because it's referring to college applications, and words related to academic affairs are probably said very frequently in English. Select is also in English. This is intrasentential switching again. The speaker, or the scriptwriters, probably chose to say this word in English in order to emphasize the importance of this action of selecting the freshman students. And of course, you is in English. This is intersentential because it occurs at the clause boundary. This word was probably set apart and said in English in order to emphasize the selection of these particular students. So again, that's the phatic function. In general, the speaker in this scene might be using English because he's the director of a university and English is seen as an integral part of academic life. Let's look at a second example, this time from the Filipino movie My Baby Love. Now, the background to this scene is that the young woman's father and the young man's aunt have started dating each other. Let's take a look at the whole scene first. So, okay lang ba sa'yo yung dad mo? Saka yung... Of course not! Huh? Nothing personal ha, pero excuse me, ang ganda-ganda ng mommy ko. So, anong ibig mong sabihin? Wala. Sinasabi ko lang na maganda ang mommy ko. So, ang auntie ko hindi? Well, mas maganda ang mommy ko. Uh, well, uh, ma mabait ang auntie ko. Still, mas maganda ang mommy ko. Fine! And besides, ayaw ko din ang mga auntie mo para sa daddy ko. If that's what you wanted to hear. Uh, Eddie Good, at least we agreed on something. I have to go na. Bakit nahanap na ako na ako. Bye! Now let's look at a few parts of that scene again and break them down. So, okay lang ba sa iyo yung dad mo? Saka yung... Of course not! Huh? Nothing personal ha, pero excuse me, ang ganda-ganda ng mommy ko. Here we see intrasentential switching, with English phrases embedded into a Tagalog sentence. In her reply, I think the woman switches to English to emphasize certain points. The main message of her reply, that her mother is beautiful, is in Tagalog, but this is an emotional conversation, and the English phrases draw attention to how she's feeling. So, anong ibig mong sabihin? Wala. Sinasabi ko lang na maganda ang mommy ko. So, ang auntie ko hindi? Well, mas maganda ang mommy ko. Here we see extra sentential switching, or tag switching. The interjection well is in English, but the rest of the sentence is in Tagalog. Well is a word that often comes before a correction of something the other person has said. She says it with some obvious annoyance, so again, I think she is using the English word to draw attention to the fact that she's correcting this guy. Uh, well, uh, mabait ang auntie ko. Still, mas maganda ang mommy ko. Fine! Here we see the same kind of tag switching with still. That word basically rejects the guy's response, and by doing it in English, she's drawing attention to that rejection. And besides, ayoko din ang mga auntie mo para sa daddy ko, if that's what you wanted to hear. The first sentence here, too, begins with tag switching, and then she switches to English again for the entire second sentence. Her second sentence is spoken with some resentment, and I think it's said in English to emphasize that. Eddie Good, at least we agreed on something. The first interjection, Eddie Good, means good then, and is a kind of vindictive expression. Then in the second sentence, the guy speaks entirely in English. I think this shows that he is starting to lose his cool and get annoyed, making his speech more emphatic. I have to go now, bakit nahanap na ako Bye! In this final comment from the woman, we see intersentential switching. And I think she basically emphasizes the important point by using English, and de-emphasizes the less important point by using Tagalog. The important point is that she's leaving, and the reason for leaving is unimportant. And she may even want it to be obvious that the reason is a made-up excuse. She quickly rushes through her excuse in Tagalog, almost too quickly to even understand. This kind of code switching using basically 50% English and 50% Tagalog is quite common in the Philippines, especially amongst middle class and upper class people. The reason for switching is not always emotional like in that scene, but it's more often an expression of identity and status. Code switching is very common in certain bilingual or multilingual environments, and I hope that these examples gave you some insight into how and why it's used in certain situations. The question of the day, for people who live in a bilingual environment, do you often code switch between two different languages? Tell us a little bit about how and why you code switch.
Be sure to follow Lang Focus on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And once again, I'd like to say thank you to all of my fantastic Patreon supporters, especially these ones right here on the screen. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.